further explanations. We go back here to the matter of the point of view, for, besides being vitally important, it is the one that is likely to give the student the most trouble. We have been trained, partly by mistaken religious teachers, to look upon the world as being like a wrecked ship, storm-driven upon a rocky coast. Utter destruction is inevitable at the end, and the most that can be done is to rescue, perhaps, a few of the crew. This view teaches us to consider the world as essentially bad and growing worse, and to believe that existing discords and inharmoniousness must continue and intensify until the end. It robs us of hope for society, government and humanity, and gives us a decreasing outlook and contracting mind. This is all wrong. The world is not racket. It is like a magnificent steamer with the engines in place and the machinery in perfect order. The bunkers are full of coal, and the ship is amply provisioned for the cruise. There is no lack of any good thing. Every provision omniscience could devise has been made for the safety, comfort and happiness of the crew. The steamer is out on the high seas, tacking hither and thither, because no one has yet learned the right course to steer. We are learning to steer, and in due time will come grandly into the harbor of perfect harmony. The world is good and growing better. Existing discords and inharmoniousness are but the pitching of the ship incidental to our own imperfect steering. They will all be removed in due time. This view gives us an increasing outlook and an expanding mind. It enables us to think largely of society and of ourselves, and to do things in a great way. Furthermore, we see that nothing can be wrong with such a world or with any part of it, including our own affairs. If it is all moving on toward completion, then it is not going wrong. And as our own personal affairs are a part of the whole, they are not going wrong. You and all that you are concerned with are moving on toward completeness. Nothing can check this forward movement but yourself. And you can only check it by assuming a mental attitude that is at cross purposes with the mind of God. You have nothing to keep right but yourself. If you keep yourself right, nothing can possibly go wrong with you and you can have nothing to fear. No business or other disaster can come upon you if your personal attitude is right, for you are a part of that which is increasing and advancing, and you must increase and advance with it. Moreover, your thought form will be mostly shaped according to your viewpoint of the cosmos. If you see the world as a lost and ruined thing, you will see yourself as a part of it, and as partaking in its sins and weaknesses. If your outlook for the world as a whole is hopeless, your outlook for yourself cannot be hopeful. If you see the world as declining toward its end, you cannot see yourself as advancing. Unless you think well of all the works of God, you cannot really think well of yourself. And unless you think well of yourself, you can never become great. I repeat that your place in life, including your material environment, is determined by the thought form you habitually hold of yourself. When you make a thought form of yourself, you can hardly fail to form in your mind a corresponding environment. If you think of yourself as an incapable, inefficient person, you will think of yourself with poor or cheap surroundings. Unless you think well of yourself, you will be sure to picture yourself in a more or less poverty-stricken environment. These thoughts, habitually held, become invisible forms in the surrounding mind stuff, and are with you continually. In due time, by the regular action of the eternal creative energy, the invisible thought forms are produced in material stuff, and you are surrounded by your own thoughts made into material things. See nature as a great living and advancing presence, and see human society in exactly the same way. It is all one, coming from one source, and it is all good. You yourself are made of the same stuff as God. All the constituents of God are parts of you. Every power that God has is a constituent of man. You can move forward as you see God doing. You have within yourself the source of every power. End of chapter 16